Find the basis for the subspace U, which is equal to the set of x, y, z, t in R4, such that 3x plus y minus 7t is equal to 0, and write down the dimension of U. Alright, well as usual, I need to understand the problem in order to do it, so let's have a look. Um, I need to find a basis for the subspace, so let me write down the definition of basis, and then I'll know what that means. Uh, basis... For you is a set of vectors in U which one span U, which means that everything in U is a linear combination of U, yes, and um, are linearly independent, which means that none of them is a linear combination of the others. But the definition involves trying to solve um, a linear combination to be equal to zero and only being able to do that if all the coefficients are zero. Yes, okay, so that's what a basis of U is. And what else do I have to find? Uh, I need the dimension of U, so the definition of that would be the number of vectors in a basis. So the dimension of U is the number of vectors in a basis for you. Okay, so that's why it says write down, because once I've got a basis, I can just count how many vectors there are and write down the answer for the dimension. Cool, so I really need to find a basis. Uh, so let's have a look at the set and see uh, how I'm going to find a basis for you. So my set is this, so it's a set of vectors in R4, and um, it doesn't tell me what any of the vectors look like. It does tell me a rule for deciding if a vector is in the set, this rule here. Well, if I solve that equation, then I could find all the vectors that are in U, and once I knew what all the vectors look like, maybe I'd be able to find a set of vectors that spanned it. Um, Normally, if I had several equations, I'd stick them in a matrix to find the solutions. But I've only got one equation. I don't see why I can't still put it in a matrix. The matrix is only going to have one row, but, you know, that's really going to be okay. I won't have to do many row operations. So let's try that. So we're going to solve 3x plus y minus 7t is equal to 0. So if I put that in a matrix, I'd have 3 for x, 1 for y. Oh, my original set had a z in it, didn't it? So no z's and minus 7t's, and the answer is 0. And that's my whole matrix. So what I'd be wanting to do is I want to be row reducing to get as many columns of the identity matrix as possible. But I've only got one row, so my columns are only going to have one number in them. What's the identity when you've only got one... I suppose it would just be the number 1. That would be the identity for just numbers. So I'm looking for the number 1. Well, there's a number 1 just here. I mean, by rights, normally I'd try and get a 1 here, but that's going to give me all sorts of stupid fractions. So I've got a 1 here already, so that could be my pivot. And the other ones would be the free variables, so I get three free variables here, so I'd have to let them be letters, so I'd have something like, you know, R, S, and I've already used T, so maybe Q, and then the Y there, so I've got 3R plus Y minus 7Q is 0, so it would be minus 3R plus 7Q. That's interesting, actually, because couldn't I have gotten that from the beginning by just going y is equal to minus 3x plus 7t without going to all this effort? I think I'm going to go back and do it that way instead. That actually is much easier. So let's see. y is equal to minus 3x plus 7t. So I can get rid of the y and substitute that back into my x, y, z, t. So x, y, z, t 
is equal to x minus 3x plus 7t z t. Okay, so normally if I had free variables at this stage, which I kind of have, I'd be able to split it up into a vector for each free variable. So one vector with all the x's, one vector with all the z's, one vector with all the t's. So let's do that. So I'll pull an x out the front of the vector with all the x's. So my first coordinate has 1x, my second coordinate has minus 3x's, third coordinate no x's, fourth coordinate no x's. Okay, uh, I've already got wind of y, so that leaves z. So no z's, no z's, 1z, no z. Okay, and t, no t's, 7 t's, no t's, 1 t. Okay, so what I've managed to do is I've managed to write all the vectors that are in U, so all my x, y, z, t's, as a linear combination of 1 minus 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 7, 0, 1. So they'd be a basis because they certainly span U, because spanning U means I can write everything as U as a linear combination of them, and I've done that. To make them a basis, what I'd need to do is be sure that they're linearly independent. So linearly independent would mean that none is a combination of the others. Okay, well this one can't be a combination of that one because there's a one here and there's a zero here. So I can't do any multiple of this to produce a one in this spot here. And this one last one, it can't be a linear combination of the other two because there's a one here and there's zeros in these positions and I can't produce a 1 by doing any combination of zeros. So none of them is a linear combination of the ones before and that makes them linearly independent. Actually just just have a look. Look I've got a little identity matrix here. Yeah so they can't be linear combinations of each other because of that little identity matrix there and so that makes them linearly independent. In fact if I actually think about it a little Anything that I do this way, it's guaranteed to be linearly independent because I've got a 1 for each of the free variables and zeros in the other vectors because they don't have those free variables. Yes, yeah, so if I ever do this again, I can just stop and say straight up that the vectors I get here have to be a basis. All right, well, I might as well finish the question now. So a basis for you is... Well, basis is a set, so it's a set with those three vectors in it. 1, minus 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 7, 0, 1. Now, have I done everything? No, I needed the dimension as well. Well, the dimension is just the number of vectors in the basis, so the dimension must be 3. Therefore, the dimension of u is 3.